witches, cats, pumpkins, and bats. I kind of hear William Shatner reading that opening. It's time for a very spooky subject, my friends, and no, it's not the coming election, but it's Halloween. I'm Josh Levine, and you are watching Josh Levine Speaks, and today you're going to learn the brief history of Halloween and the popular antiques and collectibles this holiday has spawned. If you enjoy shows like this, don't forget to subscribe below and join the thousands of other ghouls and trolls creeping on our channel. Many seem to like this kind of stuff, and as always, tell me what you like and what you don't like in the comments section below. So here we go. It's all most Halloween. Rooted in an early Celtic celebration marking the end of the harvest season, historians believe our Halloween, the traditional American version, began to grip the nation in the mid to late 19th century. The Irish are really credited with the popularization here nationally because you see, this was the time of the potato famine, a period of mass starvation and disease in Ireland from approximately 1845 to 1849, which brought a large wave of the Irish to our wonderful melting pot. All were here in search of the American dream, or really just work and food. But it seems they brought some of their Celtic traditions and a few jack-o'-lanterns with them. And here's a fun fact. Originally, jack-o'-lanterns were carved from anything and everything. Turnips, potatoes, beets, and I've even seen a few eggplants. So take that pumpkin latte. And as the Irish assimilated into American life, their heathen holiday holdover first rematerialized as the classic Halloween party, complete with costumes, candy, yeah, that's right, sweet, sweet candy, and games. Here is where one can really begin to see all things Halloween appearing in American pop culture. It was just around the turn of the 20th century, and the pagan holiday became more of a homogenized, great gap to be civilized party. It wasn't cool to be seen sacrificing goats anymore, and remember, America was busy industrializing. And as we emerge from the Victorian era, which was pretty darned up tight, I'm sure to many this holiday was still seen as quite scandalous. Plus, it was brought here by the Irish. Can you just imagine? It was probably the Kennedy's fault or the McClintons. Anyway, there's so much fascinating history here and I'm just breezing over all of it, cliff note style, because I want to get to the goods. So, you have these costume parties lasting a few decades, up and through the roaring 20s, but then there was a great pause for the most part, you know, the Great Depression followed by the Second World War, which all had an impact on most festive activities, as I'm sure you can imagine. But it came back with a vengeance in the 1950s, Mad Men style. This is the period where most Amer of America adopted the Norman Rockwell-esque trick-or-treating that we know and love today. You had parties and dress up and door-to-door -door free candy. So. Well, I guess we have the 1950s to thank for those little costume communist terrorists coming looking for a free handout, not in my neighborhood. You want the big Snickers bar? You are lucky you get the minis. All right, I gotta calm down because, you know, these traditions have since raged on or raved because there have been raves too. Okay, maybe not this year, but next. Although this year there's probably gonna be some Zoom raves, you know, Zoom 2020. And, you know, not that I'd be invited. Okay, I'm gonna focus. Halloween is a monster economy stimulator. It is reported that it's a $9 billion a year industry because capitalism always knows how to fill your wants and needs. And you know you need candy, right? And this leaves you all wondering, just how does over a century of a love for all things Halloween influence the secondary market or your basic antique and collectible resale world? Well, whenever you have this kind of tradition, history and passion behind anything, there's gonna be a lot of collectibles and collectors and curators that want it. That's really demand people, plus a chance for a few people in the know to make a few extra bucks. And with this many years worth of stuff, there's a lot of super cool goodies out there. And it's really second only to Christmas and holiday collectibles, but this is what I have to tell you. I'm still amazed how many of you out there do not know there's a crazed collector fan base that will pay really good money for these vintage goodies. Halloween's always been a sleeper, but no more. There's a lot to show you, but I got you covered. I'm gonna break it down into a few categories, show you some visuals, recent sale results, and give you a few tips, plus some of the real world general prices. So I'm gonna just jump right in with tin. And when I say tin, I mean the tin lithographic toys and noisemakers. So your rattles, tambourines, and more. You know, the clingy, clangy, jingly things. Typically, these command between $50 to $150, but as you're gonna see, wow, they can really bring a chunk. 
I want to throw in a tip here. As with all holiday collectibles, the closer you get to the specific holiday, prices rise. Demand goes up and so does the, the price. So if you have a few of these and or you know there's a stash at mom or grandma's house, wait until September or October to sell because it really matters, especially when using auction platforms. Also, if you're a buyer, shop for these during the off season. Hold them and then sell. It really works. All right, now onto the paper, and I'm talking die cuts, postcards, displays, and the like. Most of the vintage pre-1970 stuff starts around 20 bucks, but it's nothing for these babies to command 50 to 100 dollars a piece. And then there's crazy. Okay, next, the candy related. Now that's the candy containers that are glass, paper mache, hard plastic. They come in everything: witches, ghosts, goblins, pumpkins, cats, spiders, and so on. The German-made paper mache examples are some of the most expensive candy containers out there, typically from the 1930s and 40s. But watch out for reproductions because, that, you know, with all things, because once they start commanding big money, somebody starts knocking them off, you know, trying to fool you. Although sometimes it's really just to pay tribute to the originals because it becomes hard to afford the real thing. It's typical for paper mache pumpkins like this to command $250 and up. And also, the shaped like monster morphic chocolate candy molds, you wanna look for these too. They're 50 to $150 a piece for the real deal. Let's address costumes. Did you know the scary costume was originally intended to scare the evil spirits? Not become evil spirits like Jason or Michael or evil clown guy or sexy nurse. Oh. I'm back. Okay, anyway, I want to talk about the 1950s and 60s classic boxed costumes with those plastic masks. You remember those? Yeah, I'm sure you do, or some variant of them, because they really haven't changed much since the, all the way up and through the 1990s, they were the same. But the ones you want to look out for are Collegeville, Dessert, and Ben Cooper. They were sold everywhere throughout the U.S., and you're going to find them. I just saw an underdog at Goodwill. I want to tell you here that condition really does matter though. Sears collectors, you know, they they got to be in great shape, not cracked or damaged from your hot attic or dank basement. The original boxes are a big plus too. Look for political figures, popular celebrities, TV show characters, and monster characters. Here's why. Last, I want to talk about the games and toys, battery ops, motionettes, and board games. Marks made some really cool battery ops in the 60s that can fetch a pretty good penny. And speaking of games, too, I want to talk about an old Ouija board can really conjure up quite a few bucks this time of year. And sure, you'll have demonic possessions and you know basic paranormal activity in your house, too, which is a plus. But a 1938 William Fold, it's the mystifying Oracle Ouija board, just sold for a thousand bucks at an auction in Ohio, and they're out there. I love that it's called a board game too, because calling out to the dead and demons, you know, sounds like all sorts of fun. Anyway, these, the typical one you see is the 1950s Parker Brother version, and they can realize fifty dollars plus this time of year, and you'll find them at your thrift stores. They're out. They're, every house in America had one. The old paper party games, even the vintage tarot card games see an up uptick at this time of year as their Halloween cross collectibles. And just to show you a great example that this has been around for a while, here's a 1901 McLaughlin Brothers Hand of Fate board game. This is a $400 game today. Enjoy these other spooky game finds. Here's a 1960s Ideal Haunted House game. These are 400 bucks easy. 1970s Milton Bradley Witch Witch game, 250 bucks plus. A 1965 Transogram Green Ghost Game, love this game, $325 average, and a rare 1972 Seance by Milton Bradley. These are $250 bucks plus. Hey, I'm going to throw in a 1976 Weebles Haunted House. These are $400 plus because I can, Heather. You see I'm running across these at a local thrift store for five bucks would be a nice little investment. I might make a video or blog just out of cool board games next. Anyway, feel free to send me any and all questions or comments because I love feedback almost as much as I love new subscribers and monsters. Don't forget, season three of Last Week at the Auction is coming to YouTube October 29th. Until we stream again, my friends.